Do you want to reduce your stress levels? Do you want to experience better mental health and inner calm? Do you want to complain less? Do you want others to be happier around you and not tread on eggshells? Then this is the video for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Aziz. I'm a psychology graduate of Cambridge University and also a medical doctor. In this video, I'll be covering Will Bowen's book, A Complaint-Free World. It's an eye-opening and mind-easing book in just over 300 pages. But don't worry, you don't have to read it because as always, I've done the hard work for you and we'll be presenting all the key points in the next seven minutes. Now, the essence of this book is to essentially cut out all unproductive complaints out of your life and I'll explain shortly by what unproductive means. They advocate that you wear a band, a complaint free band and every time you notice that you're complaining that you switch over from one hand to the other. Now before we begin it's very important to define what is meant by a complaint because there is a difference between the dictionary definition and how the author defines the verb to complain. The Oxford English Dictionary defines the verb complain as number one express dissatisfaction or annoyance, number two state that one is suffering from XYZ. Now the definition of complain according to the author Will Bowen is very similar but with some added nuance. Number one, there is a negative energy being expressed with the complaint. It has an undertone of this is unfair, how dare this happen to me. Number two, complaints are also counterattacks for perceived injustices. Number three, crucially, it is not complaining when you speak directly and only to the person who can resolve this issue. This is interesting because although the central theme of this book is to cut out the vast majority of complaining in your life, at the same time it is is not advocating that you become a pushover. An example the author gave was that he was once in a hotel room on the top floor where there was a loud fan generator nearby and keeping him awake. He did not complain to his wife or his mother on the phone or the person in the next room. Rather, he went direct to the manager and he said, hi, thanks for the lovely room, but unfortunately there is a very loud fan nearby which is disturbing my sleep. I would like to request another room, please. The tone and levels of negativity matter too. Had he gone to the manager and exclaimed, unbelievable, worst room ever. How could you put me in a room? like that sort it out mate that again is complaining even though he is speaking to the person who can resolve the issue example number two on a very hot day statement of fact would be it's hot today complaint a heavy sigh followed by the lament god it's so hot today complaining to the wrong person is not productive and ultimately detrimental to your stress levels when most people are unhappy with their boss they complain to their spouse when they're unhappy with their spouse they complain to their friends they speak to anyone and everyone except the actual person who can remedy the situation in behavior psychology this concept is actually known as triangulation and until you speak to the person who can change the situation your unhappiness will remain and further exacerbated with the constant whining on average a person complains 30 times a day you notice it when it comes to other people, but not necessarily when it comes to yourself. But what is the psychology of why we complain so much? People complain for five main reasons, and these can be put together in the acronym GRIPE. Get attention, remove responsibility, inspire envy, power, and excuse poor performance. Let's look at each one of these in a little bit more detail. Number one, getting attention. Humans have an innate need to be acknowledged by other people. Attention from others make them feel safe, secure, and cared for. Being recognized by others makes them feel that they belong that they are part of the tribe. People will often complain simply because they want attention from others and can't think of another more positive means of getting the notice that they crave. Number two, remove responsibility. This type of complainer seeks to build a case for his or her inability to achieve by painting a hopeless picture as to the outcome. There's no use, the complainer is saying, so I'm not going to try. And this complainer is soliciting agreement from those who hear his or her complaints so as to validate their victimhood. Number three, to inspire envy. The third reason people often complain is to inspire envy that is to brag. A person will complain about someone else as a means of saying that he or she does not have the perceived character flaw being complained about. Look at that person, he's so scruffy, hint hint, look at how well groomed I am. Number four, power. A person complaining for power is saying, if it ever comes down to me against him, here are the reasons why you should be on my side. Number five, excuse poor performance. Unlike the person complaining to justify inaction, a person complaining to excuse his or her poor performance complains about circumstances after the fact to explain away failure, i.e. making excuses. Will Bowen, the author, outlines four stages of what he calls complaining competencies. These are essentially stages one moves through as they learn to become aware of complaining and how to reduce it. Number one, unconscious incompetence. Just as a fish may not be even be aware of the water that surrounds it, you may not be aware of all the complaints you hear and speak. Complaining is so much a part of who we are, it's difficult to recognize what is and what is not a complaint. Number two, conscience incompetence. 
patterns. Moving into the conscious incompetent stage means becoming uncomfortably aware of just how often you complain. You begin to catch yourself complaining but only after the fact and you can't seem to stop. You repeatedly switch your bracelet but your complaints don't seem to be diminishing. Some refer to this as the stop me before I complain stage. Number three, conscious competence. When you find yourself around other people who are complaining in this stage, you can catch yourself feeling compelled to chime in, but then you breathe and you stop yourself. When something frustrating happens and you have the chance to unload your frustrations on someone else, again, you breathe and you refrain. You become the calmer person here. Number four, unconscious competence. In the unconscious competence stage, you are no longer an ouch looking for a hurt. Rather, your thoughts are now what you want and you are beginning to notice how what you desire manifests. Not only are you happier, but also the people around you are happier. You are attracting upbeat people and your positive nature is inspiring those around you to even higher mental and emotional levels. Now, what are the benefits of being complaint-free? Aside from the ones already mentioned, a person who does not complain tends to get what he or she desires more easily simply because people want to help an agreeable person more than someone who berates them. If you become complaint-free, people are going to want to work with and for you and you will achieve and receive more than you ever dreamed. Give it time, watch for it, it will happen. If you complain about a situation, you may be able to draw others to you, but you won't be able to get much done because your focus is on the problem and not the solution. Discern what needs to be done and then begin to speak in terms of what it will be like when the challenge no longer exists. And lastly, it will be good for your mental health. Think of a calm, collected person. In your exact situation, there are other people who would not complain and that can be yourself too. So take up the complaint-free challenge. That is, aim to go 21 days without complaining. Get a band, any type of band, and switch wrists every time you find yourself complaining. This serves as an active reminder for you not to complain. If you can get through a whole day without complaining or whinging, you're on to day two. If you mess up on day two or day three, you're back to day one again. So you understand how it works. Give it time and like anything else, with persistency comes improvement. On average, it takes about four to eight months to achieve the 21 day challenge of not complaining, but it is an achievement well worth it. Interestingly, it is also one of the core concepts, never criticize, condemn or complain, that is preached by Dale Carnegie in his timeless book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I've linked the animated summary that I've done for that below here on the right. Anyway, I hope you learned something useful and enjoyed this summary. If you want to keep learning about psychology, medicine or life hacks, hit the like, subscribe and notifications button. Any suggestions or comments, feel free to post down below. Until next time, stay safe.